Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. Let's go into the service already in progress. Amen. And soul ties. Amen. And I, I really am. I'm big on more so the symptoms of soul ties. Yes, 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 yes. Because, you know, we already know the obvious of a soul tie. But the symptoms of soul ties are usually what I believe that a person feels, what a person thinks, is emotionally, and is moved by a person after you have been in intense relationship with them. Uh, you can be into soul ties with an individual from intercourse. Amen. Um, fornication. Adultery. Um, those are the physical acts of it. And if you notice, as I was studying the other day, um, I was thinking about this because, and then I'm going to release the woman of God. I was thinking about this because Adam and Eve didn't have a marriage. They didn't have a wedding celebration. They didn't have none of that. In the Bible times, what consummates a marriage is intercourse. You walking with me? Yes. And so instantaneously, all soul ties are not bad. Only when they are in covenant with God. They're good, they're good soul ties. Husband and wife should be in a soul tie. Say amen to this. But as it relates to, because anything that God has said it was good, the devil perverts it. Are you hearing me? And so now he wants these soul ties to be demonic. So as what happens is now you start being in covenant with the demonic world. Say amen to this. And anytime you are having intercourse with someone that is not your legal spouse, you have now opened up a soul tie. All right. That's why you should hold yourself Amen to this until you get married. Say amen to this. Because if you're sampling the goods, as we say, what you're doing is you're knitting yourself with all these people. And spirits, they have a tendency to grow. That's how you can be, uh, if you are a sampler and you get into a relationship and you get married and you're not satisfied in the covenant. Now, all of a sudden, you're comparing what God has given you to these soul ties that you had established prior to your covenant relationship with your spouse. I'll take an amen right then. So you have to understand, dear hearts, that there's not just physical, sexual soul ties. There's soul ties that are also emotional. You can be in an emotional soul tie and there is no, there is no intercourse at all. It happens when you start idolizing something. Believe it or not, in my time of study this week, I'm going to say this, and many of you may not want to say amen, but I'm going to say it anyway. You can be in a soul tie with your man and woman of God. In other words, you idolize us and start worshiping us and not because God told you to do it, it's because you're in a soul tie to do it. That's why we tell you don't worship us, worship God. Because we are not your God. Say amen to this. And, and God said it made it very clear, I am a jealous God. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Why? Because I'm jealous. Say amen to this. And when you start putting things, you, you can put your kids before God. They can become a soul tie. Ooh, hey, cook, I'm saying something here. You can put your jobs. Mother Dawson, you're praying for us here. Them jobs become your soul ties. Say amen to this. Money can be your soul tie. Why do you think some of these young men and young ladies sell their bodies? 
They don't do it because they want to do it. They do it because they are, it is a spirit that's driving them for the greed demon. And I will tell you this, that a lot of soul ties that men and women are connected to, DJ, they come with other stuff. We always want to see the perverted side of the soul tie. Are you walking with me? But you have to be careful because these, well, all they're doing is, is, is housing demons. People think that spirits are not real. Soul ties, listen to me, soul ties, they're on, they only get strong depending on how long you tolerate the relationship or you tolerate the connection. Two women can be in soul ties and you call yourself best friends. Moods. When, when, when one, I ain't going, you ain't going. You don't even have a reason why you don't like a person. But because the friend don't like the person, you don't like the person either. Soul ties go even as far, daughter of the Lord begin to share, share with me. Soul ties go as deep as, say for instance, if you like a man and you uh, have a friend and you start talking to your friend about the new man that you, that you like, that friend will violate the oath with you to start liking the person that you said that you like. That's a soul tie. That's why, that's why you shouldn't tell everybody your business. I'm just trying to walk you through what soul ties look like. That's all. These things are serious. Your children can be in a soul tie with you. When you don't do something, the kids don't want to do it. If you don't go, they don't want to go. Be careful because what we're doing is we're, we're subtly giving them symptoms of soul ties. And I'm almost finished, but this is another one God gave me that I thought was pretty good too. Soul tie symptoms can, watch this, can cause you to be irritated. In other words, when you're trying to pull away from something, from an individual, or it's like if you don't get that need met with that soul tie, with that individual, you, you, you moody. You're irritated. It's like you don't get a fix. If a person don't get a fix, they get irritated. Like me, if I don't eat by a certain time, my family already know, don't, don't, uh, I'm ready to go and I'm ready to get something to eat. Moody. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now watch this one God gave me that I thought was very, very powerful. And, uh, and I think I ought to share it with you. It was this one. You ready? Many of you are in a soul tie of imagination. The person is not even in your vicinity. But you're visualizing an image. And what you're doing, watch this, is you are literally trying to connect to a person because you are spirit first. So you're trying to connect with them in a realm that you don't even know nothing really about. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Then you start visualizing these people. Then you started, have you ever noticed how you could start acting like somebody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are, be careful of those soul ties like that. And then watch the cold when the Lord began to share with me that you start hearing this person that you're trying to disconnect from. That spirit is so strong, you can, and, and, and let me tell you something. We've had sons and daughters testify that they have, they, since we've been on this series, they've testified some strange things have happened. 
even in the dream world. One of our sons and daughters, we had to tell them scriptures and prayers to pray to renounce these, these, these demons in the dream world. And you got to be very careful when you don't renounce a dream. You are agreeing with it. And some people think that we're being super spiritual. Y'all just no, no, no. You too holy, holy. No, you better open up your mouth and start renouncing some of these demonic dreams that you have. Because if you don't renounce this spirit. It gives it a legal right to be there. If you're dreaming about, as we talked about, having intercourse with somebody in your sleep, that's demonic. The succubus and the incubus spirit. We ain't got time to go back, but I'm just telling you, you got to renounce those spirits. And I've been telling you that the Lord was sharing with me that some of the relationships and couples are, stri are struggling because there is no physical contact between you and the spouse. But they're in the dream world, they're getting their need met through the dream world, through the succubus and those other spirits. Are you hearing me? And that causes a restraint that causes a, a, a violation in the covenant because now that affair is taking place and it's not with you. It's with a demonic spirit. That's why you have to be careful who you connect with. You have to be very careful who you are allowing in your space. All company is not good company. Paul says it this way, Mother Dawson. He says, bad company corrupts good morals. That's what your book says. You can't hang around everybody and think that those spirits won't transfer. I'm very selective of who I sit down to eat with. Perverted spirits. You can be at a dinner table with your spouse and that other person that's perverted will start trying to arouse you right in front of your spouse. Say amen to this. It's perverted demons. Or you will start imagining something about this person and God says that's not your spouse. That's why he tells, when Jesus talks to those disciples, he said, when you've already lusted in your heart, you've already committed the sin. Because it's, it's in the heart. Visuals, aids. You got to watch this. That's why you got to be careful when you use visual aids to stimulate you in your relationships. Because visual aids... Their job is, visual aids job, you think is to help you get to where you want to go. Y'all understanding what I'm saying? But what it does, visual aids gives you a visual of an image. And what happens is, is you're not now uh, being intimate with the person you're with. You're being intimate with the visual aid you just saw. Lord have mercy. We, we, we're working, we're working, we're working, we're working. And so you have to be very careful. Other things happen when it comes to these soul ties. You got to be careful not only with the mood swings, not only with triggering certain attitudes, not only with the memory, not only with, with physical manipulation. That's another one too. Physical manipulation is, is a soul tie. In other words, you create an argument to leave. Yeah. Yeah. You cause that argument on purpose because you already knew where you were headed to and you knew you couldn't get out of that house or out of that situation unless you cause that argument. And what you don't even realize is you're being you're being lured. You're being lured by a spirit. Are you hearing me? Ah. The other one is you got to be careful for stalking. Stalking, that is a soul tie. If, if someone is stalking you, you go, oh, and, and watch this. This is how they, oh, we just ran into you. No, you didn't just bump into me. You was following me. 
You were going where I was going. We, we've, we've had that before. We've had people, and listen, listen, it was so cold, soul ties, ain't no, there's no intercourse involved, just demonic soul ties. Me and Overseer have been all the way down, daughter, to uh, West Covina. We had been in West Covina. I was looking for a car in West Covina years ago. And somebody, when I got back to church on a Sunday, someone told me, I saw y'all in West Covina. Wait a minute, how are you going to see me cook in West Covina and we both live in the high desert? No, you're following me, stalking me, soul ties. It was a soul tie. A young lady had a soul tie with overseer. Every overseer has always done her own hair. And we've always done huddles. We get ready to do a huddle. You know, when you press your hair, when overseer would press her hair, you could smell the, the, uh, the hot iron. You know, that someone's hair and you could smell the shampoo. They would, they would, and I, and, and I start realizing, see, we didn't know all this stuff till I started passing in this desert. They start, they, I'm serious. They, oh, uh, she was she was first lady then yeah, first lady your hair looks so nice I mean what you know what you know about that because you 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 those are soul ties folks try to get your hair try to poke and, and all that stuff with your hair and I'm saying all of this to you guys to be aware that these demons are still alive because you're in a desert region when you go to New Orleans, what is New Orleans known for? Come on. Voodoo, hoodoo, witchcraft, Mardi Gras. They worship that stuff. Take a whole week for Mardi Gras. Yeah, I want to go to Mardi Gras. Well, you better know what you're getting yourself into. We, I, 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 when I was ignorant of that demonic world, I had my family down there and we just got off a cruise ship and we walking around uh, all those streets down there. And you and, and I'm telling you something, when they do it, they do it. Them spirits come out that them, them, them Jew joint places, little, little of nothing on. And you trying to be a holy man of God, trying not to look and can on and they get right there in your face. Say amen to this because these demons are real and y'all they masquerade. Why do you got to cover yourself? These are spirits. Throw y'all beads and you want a bead. And so you got somebody who half naked putting a bead around your neck. Soul tie. Why do they give you a bead? Why does it go around your neck? It is a counterfeit because a threefold cord is not easily broken. It represents a yoke. It represents a bondage. And you're just, ooh, she gave me some bees. No, I don't want that around my neck. Because there's a spirit attached to it. I, I hope I'll help, I'm helping some of you today. Soul ties also can be in conversation. You talk to people every day. And you're knitting your soul with this person. It has nothing to do with intercourse. It has to do with an emotional soul tie. Say amen to this. And then this other one, and, uh, and, and, and we'll, we'll move forward. Watch this. This is one that the Lord was giving me too that I thought was very, very, uh, ooh, you know, kind of weird. But he gave it to me. And this is what he said. Obsessing about the individual. And you obsess about them in your thoughts. Watch this, Sister Trace. He said, particularly at a certain time during the night. Got to be careful. People will connect to you, Asia, just because. They're not really trying to be your friend. People connect to you to stop you from being something that God wants you to be. I've seen a young man 
desire to be with a particular woman. But I've seen a woman become friends with the woman that the young man desired to be with just to stop the connection from happening. It's a spirit. And the whole object of the game is to stop them from being united. But your assignment is to derail it. So what you do is you connect, you you start being beginning a soul tie with that person, and now you and that person become the closest of friends because all along your assignment is to stop that individual from moving forward in the covenant. Be careful with that. Some of you have soul ties even with your bosses. That's why you do extra to get in their good graces. Not for the pay. You get paid to do a certain amount, but you're going extra. You're going above that pay grade for extra favors. And you're creating soul ties. I want y'all to hear this. Be careful with that, all right? All right, so that was my assignment, overseer. Come on in here. Amen. So you got to be careful with that. The other one is fantasizing. I talked about that a little bit. The other one is dreaming about a person. Watch this. This is one God gave me, and I had to write that down. Dreaming about a person while single, you're dreaming about a married person. That's a demonic. It's been so perverted now where you can dream about a person. And we were talking to one of our sons. He says, it was so cold. Ever since we got into this, this series, I start renouncing him and I hadn't had dreams. But then all of a sudden, yeah, yeah, that's a blessing. But then all of a sudden, it shows up without a face. The reason why the spirit shows up without a face because it wants you to acknowledge because it's a legalist cook. It can't be there, but its job is it shows up without a face because I want you to articulate a face. Once you speak a name, boom, I got you because you said it. So instantly you have to renounce. Don't put a face, don't put a name to there. Don't put a, don't know. I renounce every evil work of that demonic world in the name of Jesus that's trying to get me in my dream life. I renounce it in the name of Jesus. Every thought, every visual thought. Every, and, and watch this. It was so cold. I'm going to share this person's testimony. This demonic thing was so cold. Watch this, Mother Dawson. It, this demon put its tongue in the mouth of this individual no face but you feel this and you sleep see people don't think this stuff is real that's because we wrestle we, we're in a war we're in a war I don't care look at somebody tell me we're in a war we're in a war especially now that it's being exposed that's why people are irritated and upset that's why people are easily frustrated and, and, and mad about you mad about what light bread so what I got Weber and you want it wonder they both start with a W eat the bread if you want it and as overseer told the couples it's bigger than the cup it's bigger than the cup, cook. And this is the thing about this stuff. Uh, these soul ties and these symptoms, you just call it normal. Because he wants you to normalize this. Anytime overseer would have a dream about our children, we would get up and rebuke it, and then we would call them. We don't just sit here and say, oh, well, we just cover them in the blood of Jesus. They'll be all right. No. Make contact and explain to them what you just saw. And I'm telling you what God gave me the interpretation of what that means. And you better get your house in order. Yeah. 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 Period. 
And many of you, you flirt with demons too much. Demons are not to be played with. Say amen to this. And so let me give you a scripture because I want you to understand the, the power of this thing. And I, again, this, this, is, this is so cold about it because the Bible says, put up Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 12, 9 through 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, real quick. I want to show you something. Because again, the Bible talks about the threefold cord. I mentioned it earlier. I want to show you scriptures about it. That the threefold cord is not easily broken or severed. And when you're in a relationship that God has ordained and made it possible for you to be in, you have to declare that this threefold cord is not going to be broken. Say amen to this. Amen. Now, now look what it says. I'm in Ecclesiastes verse number, uh, chapter number four, verse number nine. Say amen when you have it. Amen. Two are better than one because they have what? A good reward for their labor. Let's go to the next verse, please. Four... If they fall, the one will what? Lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is what? Alone when he falleth. For he had not another to help him up. Let's go to the next verse, please. Again, if two lie together, they, then they have heat. You know what that is. But how can one be warm alone? You walking with me? Verse 12. And if one what? Prevail against him. Two shall what? Withstand him. And a threefold cord is not. Do you agree with the word of the Lord? Do you agree with the word of the Lord? Now. One of the things that the Lord began to tell me, that's why it's important that you raise your children in the house of God. And the reason it is this, because there are some things that you may not be privy to that your parents or your grandparents or your great grandparents or your great, great, great grandparents have done as far as a covenant with the enemy, with the demonic world. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Verses six and seven. Very important. That, and I, this, 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 this is a little bit thick, but I'm going I'm to I'm try to do it. It says, look what it says. Put, put it in the NLT, uh, Jasmine, please. Yes. Remember your creator now. Are you walking with me? While you are what? Do you hear me? This is powerful. Remember your creator. Old school would say in the days of your youth. But remember your creator now while you are young. Watch this. Before the silver cord of life snaps. And the golden bowl is broken. Don't wait until the water jar is smashed. At what? The spring and the what? Pulley is broken at the well. In other words, what we're trying to say is that this silver cord, hear me. Let's go to the next verse and I'll, I'll explain it. For them, for then the dust will return to the earth and the spirit will return. Come on, class. The spirit returns where? The spirit returns where? It don't stay in the grave, class. The spirit goes back to where it originally was created. That's why we try to tell you, you guys got to understand that you are spirits first. You just so happen to have a body. Say amen to this. And the spirit will return to who? God, who what? Gave it. Now, when you look at this, this silver cord nourishes our spirit and it gives us life. And when it is cut, we'll return back to the creator. But you got to watch this because when we're speaking of it, uh, of, of, of these spiritual cords, now the enemy will try to bring what we call illegal cords. And these illegal cords now become toxic. They become what we call unholy alliances, ungodly soul ties. 
unhealthy relationships, illicit soul ties of the past, present, and they are so cold they can even go into future. And the job is to snap you. It's to break you. It is to shatter your divine calling and your divine connection with God. Are you hearing me? That's why you have to be careful who you marry. Listen to me, dear hearts, because that is one that goes in future. Because now you're in covenant with somebody. And when you're in covenant with somebody, you don't marry somebody to, to get a divorce. If you do, you slow. You don't marry somebody to get divorced. Don't marry them then. It's better not to, I just better not to marry you if I'm going to marry you, then turn around and divorce you. But what happened is it gets into the future, daughter, because now if, that's why the Bible says you can't be unequally yoked. Because if you're unequally yoked and they have an addictive spirit or they have a perverted spirit, what happened is they bring that spirit to your marital dyad. And now you're dealing with spirits. That's how you can be so kind and be so nice and cook the dinner and bring it to the table and run the bath water and give the massage. And then all of a sudden, ah! And your first thought is, what happened? Where did we go wrong? Because it is a spirit that doesn't want, watch this, don't want you and your spouse to have intercourse. So its job has been sent, daughter, through a soul tied spirit to interrupt that particular union so now you tripping and now you mad and you moody and now ain't nobody doing nothing you think but the spirit is sitting over there saying oh yeah we gonna have fun tonight you not speaking to your spouse that's why you got to be careful and I, I, I say this to you all because I, I, I really feel like many of you 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 trust too much. You're too trusting. And when, when you're too trusting, that means you, you, you're giving your life to a person. Anytime you have intercourse with somebody, what you're telling them is you, you're putting your life in their hands. Watch this. You don't know what they have. I'm talking about STD wise. You all know what that means. And so anytime you lay with that person, you're telling that person you're willing to become one with them. Listen to me. Could it be that that person has been designed to be your distraction? And some people are infected. And their assignment is to infect as many as they can. Be careful of, and many of you nowadays, you, 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 you like what you see. You go off what you see. You don't even check in in the spirit and folks can pay for everything that you see. They paying for all of this to look a certain way, cook. It's not them. It, they're paying for it to be done. And when they pay for it to be done, you're marrying a pretentious person. Mother Chris, you're marrying a spirit of pretense. So what happened is you'll never get a chance to know the real person because that spirit of pretense is what you are married to. So that pretend spirit will never be vulnerable with you, Drew, because it doesn't know how, because I'm always a pretender. I'll pretend that we're great. I'll pretend that I'm having a great time. I'll pretend that everything is okay. I'll pre and all it is, it is a facade. 
then you have to check it in the spirit realm first. That's why we tell many of you, the Bible said men are to always pray. And you may say, well, apostle, I'm in it right now. How do you get out of it? Sever the soul tie. How do you sever the soul tie? You first have to acknowledge that there is a soul tie. After you acknowledge that there is a soul tie, then you have to renounce that soul tie. After you renounce that soul tie, the third point we're going to talk about that, you better get away from it. And many of you, you play with it too much. What make y'all think you got the power to get away from a soul tie that had you bound for years? And that is manipulating you like a puppet on strings. That is Satan's job. He is the puppet master. His job is to play with your emotions. His job is to make only love you when you want to be. Lord, I got to get out of this kind of stuff. You're stuck. That is not the will of God for you. It goes against everything God intended when he made you a dominion there. He, does, he wants to be the only one in control of you. You don't have the power to control that person. And when that person starts manipulating you, that's why notice anything that moves when you, y'all got to be careful with this witchcraft spirit. Anything that tries to control the mind, control the mood, control the situation, it's a form of witchcraft. Husbands, be careful. When she only wants to have a good time when she's ready. Mood altering. It's a form of power. It's a form of manipulation and it's a form of witchcraft. You better hear me. Husbands, you got to be careful that you don't want to be just good and, and, and you know, he, 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 when you want it. Because it's on the opposite of the witch, it's called the warlock. I talked to you this morning about don't just talk about a Jezebel. No, you are Ahab. Because Jezebel was only allowed to do what she could do because Ahab permitted it to be so. I wish I had a real church to say amen in here. It may not be what you like today, but it's so enough what you need. And these spirits are seriously out of control. And if you don't do anything to stop it, they're going to go to your children. They're going to go to your grandchildren. They're going to keep going through the bloodline. Why? Because you're not doing anything about it. I know that my family, my side of the family were, were drinkers. They were alcoholics, if you ask me. I made it very clear to my children. You cannot play with alcohol. I've never been a big drinker. My strongest drink was California Cooler. I'm glad you're laughing because that's as far as I stop. Because I didn't want to see nothing making me out of my head and then I'm doing something and I don't know what I did. So I didn't want nothing stronger than that. Didn't want nothing. I don't care what you say. Call me weak. Call me or whatever you want. At least I got my right frame of mind. And I know what I'm doing and I know how to drive. I know how to get home safe. And you know, Okay. But I told my kids, don't do it. You can't play with that spirit. Because it's in my family. It's in my bloodline. I told my kids when they were old enough to understand. There's a perverted demon in my bloodline. Don't play with these perverted demons. It's in my bloodline. I had, I had to be honest. Don't go lay in your don't go lay, Don't let no girl lay her head on your lap. Taylor, don't let no man. Don't you go sit in yourself in no man's lap. I had to draw the lines because these perverted demons, they're, they're real. And a lot of you, you see, the, I just tell my kids, don't know. I love soul train, but I, I don't want to see you dropping it like it's hot. There ain't nothing cute about that. You two years old dropping it like it's hot. All you doing is promoting the demon in that child that when they get older, it's okay to start coming down poles and, and, and all of that. Y'all got see, y'all think everything cute. You got to watch these spirits. Mother Dawson, am I preaching all right? These spirits will mature. 
And then when they get out of control, you, Lord, please deliver my child. No, you should have delivered your child when you were raising that child. Say amen to this. So I set an example. My son didn't, has never seen me hit their mother. My daughter knows if a person don't know how to open, I still open up overseer's door to this day. I still pull her chair out when we're at a restaurant to this day. 35 years. Nothing has changed. Because I'm role modeling in front of them. I tell my son, open your sister's door. You see me doing it. Don't you just go get in that car. Open her door. She's my sister. Act like it's your wife. And see, a lot, a lot of these guys can't clap and they wonder why their marriage is tore up because you're not doing nothing as a sacrifice. All that is is an act of service. In other words, the greatest in the kingdom is a servant. How can I serve the people in the church but I can't even serve my own home? How can you be kind to the people in the church but you mean as a junkyard dog to those that you're at home with? Your first ministry ain't in here, honey. Your first ministry is in your house. Wish I had a real church now. Say amen to this. Don't come here trying to help me and you mean to your husband. Now go, go, go back to your husband. Don't come here. I ain't looking for that scat cat. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you have to watch these spirits. That's why many of you, you come in here and you, you, you get easily irritated with your brother and sister and you're not even realizing you got a spirit and they got a spirit. I, I don't care about y'all not clapping this morning. I'm, I, I know your, your silence is a breakthrough. So what happened is your, your spirits are at war with each other. It's like two dogs in the same cage. They, in other words, we fighting for territory, Chavis. Who going to run this spot here? And your spirits are out of control. And you come in here, we exposing demons. We're calling it what it is. And the truth of the matter is no demon likes to be exposed. Oh, y'all sitting here like, like y'all, 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 y'all. Let me call you out and call you out in front of all these people and tell the folk who you really are and what you're doing and what you made of. The first thing they do, they get offended. He didn't have to call me out in front of all those people because no demon wants to be exposed. So what we do is we have to isolate the demon. Why didn't he pull me to the side privately and say what he had to say to me privately? Well, nowadays, these demons' daughters are so bold. And the cold part about it, you bring them in here. Cook, they ain't saying too much right there. Demons don't just come to church. No, you bring the demon with you. I had to share with somebody the other day. I had to share with somebody the other day. They say, well, well, church folk always hurt people. And I shared with someone the other day. I said, you know the problem with that statement? The church has not hurt anybody. No. It's funny to me how this happens. You say the church folk hurt people, but you part of the church. Now, I, this, is some, this is something I'm thinking about this now. If church folk hurt people, what about the time when you hurt somebody? See, 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 I shadow that guy. It's easy for me to blame you of hurting me. But what happens when you are the offender? Now all of a sudden we forget that you're part of the church too? That's why Overseer said a few weeks ago in the scripture, every man is right. Yeah, y'all heard it too, just like I did. You don't even see you do nothing wrong, and you, you, you guiltier than everybody else. 
you, your sentence ought to be life, but we, he only given you a penalty, a, 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 a fine to pay. And I, I didn't even do as much as you did. And here I am serving time. And here you are just had to pay a penalty. That's why when I try, we tell, tell all our leaders, if you do what we tell you to do, you won't be easily offended. You ain't got to say amen to this. Mother Dawson, you've been here longer than anybody. You know we've been telling folk, leaders got to get to church at least 30 to 45 minutes early so you can hit this altar before you do anything. And the ones that come late, the ones coming in and hot, as you say, and don't get to the altar are the main ones that's always offended. You have created a spirit of rebellion. And because that rebellion spirit has been created, that's why you offended. Uh, overseer, say something today because I'm, I'm about done. Somebody say amen. 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 Let's turn to 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. The word of the Lord says, now may the God of peace make you holy in every way. And may your whole spirit uh -oh. and soul uh -oh. and body uh -oh. be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. And as the Apostle Paul is writing, I'm looking at the, the, the progression from mm. spirit down to body. And he's saying that God wants us to be preserved blameless, blameless. not just in our spirit, but he says in our souls wow. and in our bodies. And the reality is that our spirit man is our highest nature. Yeah. It, it, it is the, the nature that is most like God. Yeah. It is the nature that takes the word of God, tries to honor the word of God, whereas our soulish nature is comprised of our desires, our intellect, Listen. our own minds, our emotions, and our will, in our soulish nature. Listen. It's more about us, our personality, what we desire, what we want to do, what we want to see happen. Whereas the spirit lives to please God, yes. the soul lives to please the flesh. Ooh. But they're all in one body. So you have the spirit and the soul both fighting and vying for one space so when Paul lists the order notice he didn't say I pray that you be preserved in body soul and spirit ah. he didn't say I pray that you be preserved in soul spirit and body he lists the spirit first because it is the most prevalent man and it is your highest nature that you should be preserved first and foremost in your spirit before any other part of you. Man is comprised of three parts, which we call the tripart nature. You are a spirit, you live in a body, and you have a soul. You are a spirit. You're not a body. You're not a soul. You are first a spirit. You live in the body and you have a soul. But for so long when we've lived in this worldly system, we have begin to think that we are a body and we have a spirit and a soul. Yeah. No, you are a spirit just as God is a spirit according to John 4, 24. We are made in the likeness in the image of God according to Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28. We're made in the likeness and the image and the similitude of God and because God is a spirit, we are all also spirits first and we've been placed inside of a body and we have a soul and when we're not aware of this we will pacify if you can go back with me to first Thessalonians 5 23 we'll pacify the soul and the body and we do little maintenance on the spirit and we wonder why we are affected and effected Whatever you do to pacify and to satisfy the spirit, it has reverberating beneficial effects for the soul and the body. I agree. 
Some of you who've been under us a long time, you already know where I'm going with this. Whatever we do to preserve the spirit, to make it more like God, to honor the word in God, it has reverberating effects for the body and the soul. Because the spirit will hear the word of God and it will honor it when we read in 1 Corinthians and the body says to flee, to run from fornication. The spirit has to make the decision to do that and as we run from fornication, it will have beneficial effects on the body and the soul because I'm not in a soul tie with anybody and neither am I dealing with sexually transmitted diseases because my spirit honored the word of God and my soul and my body is benefiting from my spirit's obedience to the creator and the one that made it Very good. there is nothing that I can do in the body that will benefit the soul and make the soul in a better place because my soul is only desiring to fulfill my desires, my intellect, my mind, my emotions, and my will. That has nothing to do with the spirit. Everything that the soul has to do has to do with you being in the earth realm and pacifying your own personal desires. So anytime you pacify the soul, it has no benefit to the spirit. Paul says in Romans chapter 8, to be carnally minded is death. Go with me to Romans chapter 8. To be carnally minded is death. I think maybe verse number 4, 5, 6. I don't know. Good teaching. And you can give it to me also in the King James jazz. Go with verse number 5. For, for verse number 6. For to be carnally minded. Where do you think the carnal nature is coming from? It's coming from the soul. It is the soul that's dictating the carnal nature. But the scripture says when you're carnally minded, it will lead to death. Yeah. But when you're spiritually minded, it will lead to life and peace. Yeah. Many of us are suffering unnecessarily because we put the dictates and the desires of the soul over the spirit. And anytime you do that, you're going to get soulish results. Yeah. Anytime you allow the flesh to be pacified over the spirit, you're always going to have some repercussions you're going to have to pay down the road. Anytime you make the decision to dishonor God, you're going to have to pay for it. But anytime you make the decision to honor God, it will lead to you being preserved in your body and in your spirit and in your soul. Like Verse number seven. Because the carnal mind, that soulish nature, is the enemy against God. When my soul wants to do what it wants to do, my soul may want to sit down and overeat. Well, I know that the spirit of gluttony does not line up with the word of God. So anything the word of God tells the soul, the soul instantaneously will rebel against it when the spirit man isn't calling the shots in the body. If your soul is leading you, you can always tell when your soul is leading because you make soulish choices. You make carnal choices. You make and do things that pacify your flesh. You don't do that which edifies the spirit. You never have to wonder where a person is in their walk with the Lord because their choices are all about themselves. It's what I want to do. I don't care what the word. The word of God says to love. I don't want to love. Well, I gave them a chance to love right. They didn't love right, so I'm done with that. That's, that's the soul talking. Burn me once, shame on you burn me twice shame on me that's the soul talking the spirit says okay you messed up with me I'll forgive you then you come back again a second time the spirit says I'll forgive you you come back the 50th time the spirit says I forgive you because we know that there's a scripture that says how many times do you forgive your brother and the scripture says seven times 70 so there is no number of times that you can come to me and ask for forgiveness that I turn you away and say you done messed up with me for the 51st time Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. We pray that you are blessed by the message. If you were, please like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe. But remember, here at Showers of Blessings, we want you to be blessed.